Tide Hunter Enigma yeah, Tide was kind of a favorite. The secret's favorite. Yeah. Just like just pick those two heroes and then pick whatever hero after all and then delay the game and your secret team fights. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, a hero you like a lot, the Nature's Prophet. Yeah. So uh, we kind of like versing against Tide Hunter Enigma because both of those heroes this time and like in past, like if one of those like jungle blocks or like offlane is really hard. Like if that happens, so those two heroes get way too delayed. That's what I feel. Oh, Furious. So Misery Nature's Prophet going to be our first choice here from Team Secret. Navi going to respond with an Enchantress OD. Figured the OD was definitely going to be one of those two pickups, but the Enchantress paired up with it. We like to use those two heroes together as well, Enchantress OD. I think it really... Like balances the picks, like it, it doesn't show that much heroes, mm -hmm. like but it actually pressures enemy to not pick like so many heroes. So hero pool gets limited if those two heroes comes out. Mm -hmm. All these like too strong and in the laning phase, and each entrance can, can lead up to dive to towers or push to towers. So you mean like you have to, for example, Team Secret here have to pick up some sort of support that deals with Enchantress, Yeah, right? maybe then, like Crystal Maiden. Is right, like, like and maybe it. even a, a core potentially, but then you also have to worry about the mid where, yeah. you know, OD could be there. Which... Uh, I, I think Ursa might come out though. Ursa? For Secret, yeah. Like, Enchantress they... also serves as a flex pick in a sense because it can go off lane mm -hmm. and it can go jungle. Yeah. You guys prefer it in jungle? We like to just like pick enchantress and wait for Team the enemies to pick back. like and the band and then we might switch into offlane or supports. I think that hero is the one who can do ab abuse that thing the most. Yeah. Don't 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 show them like with offlane or support. Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Lion pickup? No surprise. I mean, uh, since why it's not? secret, like Five secret doesn't like remaining. Ursa from what I know. It's like they love to use like Spectre and Slark. So I think Ember Spirit. Might, yeah, I, I think I don't think they'll pick up Ember Spirit. It's Enchantress and OD are both good against it, and I think it's heavily on Slark or Spectre for MP. Yeah, it feels like Spectre has definitely got to be one of the bans from Navi at this point in time when you already have a Nature's Prophet for Team Secret. Combination of global, yeah. too much to handle oftentimes. I think the Invoker ban was really good. Yeah, like, uh, yeah bigger hero as well, and that hero just like, if, if Invoker is like with the Furion, like, can do two things. You can just like group up and push, and then like delay to late game. And yeah. Invoker is like still strong late game. Mm -hmm. so Would you say it's it's too strong late game? I think Invoker is like one of the best hero in the late game. Like that hero, just you can't just catch him. That hero does like so much damage. What's good about uh, about OD and Enchantress is that they deal with summons really well. So the Nature's Prophet, the Treants aren't as good. If they had an Invoker, Thought Spirits wouldn't be as good. Mm. Yeah. And it's funny, Team Secret are actually going to ban away uh, a couple of summons heroes. The Beastmaster as well as the Lycan going to be taken out of the pool. And Weehaw's Wind Ranger. So they're just going to identify the stronger heroes that Weehaw was playing at Shanghai. Well, not... I think for mid, he might pick up Windrunner for Secret. Uh, it was just banned. Oh, they banned it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so they're actually targeting mid a lot. But I think Spectre and Slark, uh, not Slark since Void come out, but I think the heavily Spectre on Secret side. This is voice is something we've seen general play a lot. Yeah. Seems to be one of the only heroes that Navi really utilizes is, uh, to the fullest extent of the hero. Mm -hmm. That and I would say Batrider. That, that yeah. was the other one that General was really practicing uh, shortly after he joined Navi. And it definitely showed. Creates a lot of space here for the OD, that's for sure. But it also means we do have some kind of static laning heroes. Spaces Void and OD not going to be moving around the map a whole lot. Does this mean we need to see something a bit more aggressive from our uh, safe lane or Navi? If it is a safe lane, it could be safe yeah, lane since, OD. Yeah, since like OD and FB are both like strong later, and yep. if they pick another like strong carries, then they might be able to abuse the all all three lanes. But Tyrion is really good against OD and FB <clears throat> because they are like based on team fights, and they don't have that much like wave cleaner. So Fury uh, can right. yeah, Fury can like work around the map and they can always push into the push to the lanes and make a move. 
So what do you think about Slug for Navi? Uh, uh, offlaner doesn't synergize as well. FB, I don't like FB and Slark, especially. And then if they pick Slark, they don't have the heavy wave cleaner. So they, all three of them may have to like show to the map, which will be like like danger to gank, get ganked. And what about some natural clears such as Sven or yeah, Juggernaut? Sven, Sven might be one of the good things. Or Navi, but uh, Sven, na like nature of Sven, like Sven just like delays the game somehow. So we, we saw a lot in the early stages of Shanghai that you would pick faces Void and Sven together. Sort of, yeah. you, you eliminate that uh, risk of being locked down, and at the same time, you can always zone the enemy and give Sven the room that he needs to position himself. Yeah, and faceless boy just don't have to just have to ultimate in, in front of Sven. Which exactly, is really hard. <laughs> What about this Doom pickup? We saw Team Secret, obviously, the China Doom Team that everyone was kind of tied. Oh, Oracle. <clears throat> uh, but the four position Secret Doom. Tough here to shut down. That jungler uh, still has some harassment power. QO, what's, what's your kind of uh, thought process about the Doom? On, on the way that Secret run it? Yeah. Uh, the, I think Doom is one of the strongest hero for the. Like, if you meet, like, Doom in the, like, jungle, you always have to run. Doom is, like, the most strongest hero. You just have to hit once and the enemy have to run. So I think in order to get the map, Doom is, like, Doom may work, like, the most in the taking the maps. Yeah. And OD Oracle, like, it has a really good synergy. But mm -hmm. as I said, I think they have to get somehow the lane clear so Odi and Oracle can fight in the opposite side, like enemy side of the map. If you're a team secret here, uh, what do you ban then? Which one of those wave clears do you find more disruptive to your own lineup? Is well, it I think if it was us, like we might ban Juggernaut, so, like Juggernaut yeah. and then like so we can shut down the, the group of power. Juggernaut can just like, with Juggernaut healing ward, you can just go up to hit towers and it pushes out. Do you think Navi go with safe lane OD and then put a Death Prophet mid? That'd be an interesting. Fit. Yeah, that would fit real well with the Oracle. I like that idea yeah. a lot. OD safe lane, I think OD is like more strong in the safe lane yeah. than mid because if OD gets like some strong supports at mid, like such as Wisp, then it's really good hero. But I think OD safe lane, you can just like win against Fury and like really hard as well and they can push out the waves. At top, ah, they can the push the powers. Secret um, anticipating a mid OD with those pens. I think the gyrocopter is also. I mean, we didn't really bring it up, but it's one of the strongest heroes to combo with the faces void. It also offers some wave clear, not the innate kind of power that Sven does. But the gyro like secures the team fights, which is like the crowd way to call down. Good like, call, uh, Jacob. <clears throat> And this Not is a point where up. Team Secret's draft might be a bit too greedy with the Draw Ranger. A uh, bit of a goofball pick. And then they have the Doom in the jungle and Nature's Prophet. They're lacking damage outside of physical. The way Puppy runs Doom is like, I don't think he puts that much in the farming. So I no, think no. it's kind of different to like. So the laning stage is fine, but they still sort of lack some magical damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a Drill Ranger, you're facing up against a Death Prophet, you have all the information in the world, QL. What would you like to play in this sort of situation? Is it the Puck, the yeah, Lina? I think Puck or oh, Venom. Oh, oh that, all right, that's something different. Venom, man, so last pick here for Team Secret. Thoughts, gentlemen? I always love a Venom answer. Uh, I know you do. We are lost to play Venom in like unwanted game. I feel like some like if you if he has like nothing to go, like he likes to use Zeus or Venom. That's what I feel. And I think with Draw Range Aura, like you can win the laning phase as well. Yeah. So where are we leaning? Is it Team Secret for a prediction for you, Jacob? I'm a reminder real quickly that this is not a Venom, it's a Venomancer mid, it can't go 0 and 22. I think Actually, Navi's gonna game. take this game. <clears throat> Navi? Yeah. QO? I still think Secret. So, okay. Yeah. Alright, well we'll see what our caster has to say about that. We've got Durka, as well as Blitz. Thanks guys, I mean Milk, calling this Drow Ranger.
pick a bit of a goofball pick. It's got me baffled. What do you think, Blitz? I think if you have a preset strategy around it, it's pretty good. And obviously, Secret, they ran it at uh, Shanghai with some success as well against OG, I believe. So I think it's fine. They wanted really strong lanes to match up anyways. I'm more surprised that Navi decided to go with what Jacob thought. Like anytime Jacob suggests something and the team goes through with it, I'm like, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Oh, the trust in him. Well, game number one, Na'Vi against Team Secret. Did your up on that safe lane OD. They've loved to run this in the past. Just get him that secured and guaranteed farm. And we've seen a lot of our style Enchantress recently. He loves to roam around and really dominate these lanes, dictate exactly what's going on across the map. So Neko's Oracle, of course, he's not shy about that hero, but Dendi's Death Prophet. Find out exactly how he fares up against this Venom Answer mid. Another hero that... Kind of caught me off guard. What's the idea behind Venno against DP? I think Venno's just a hero that is incredibly stable. They needed something that could help them out in team fights, And you don't really have any heroes that were left that were able to safe push. Like Kyo said, you needed something like summons. The Nature's Prophet is there already. The Invoker was taken away. And then you're kind of just not left with a ton of options to go for the safe push. And I guess it's also a ranged hero. Adding in with that Drow Aura as well, just being able to right-click away towards the mid and Death Prophet. You know, she's pretty damn squishy. 655 HP, 3 armor. That's a right-click attack coming from the Venno. Weeha's gonna get himself the Bounty Rune trade across for one apiece. And we'll get ourselves underway. So, Misery up at top lane, Nature's Prophet up against the safe lane OD. Seneco sneaking around, but Puppy Doom gonna block off the wave at mid, just allowing the Equilibrium to set itself up and take a look at that. He spotted him. No courier snipe for you, Seneca, my friend. Forced back towards the top rune spot and down the bottom lane, what have we got? A turn lane, we draw Ranger. Highlight die on the Lion. General. Playing Faceless Void. It's not gonna be the easiest of lanes down here for him. You have the right click attacks coming out of these two heroes. You don't necessarily want nuke damage or burst damage to come all at once thick and fast against the Void. You just want to chip away, burn through his regen, and make sure he can't efficiently use that time warp to get himself back up to full health. That was really that was really well done too by General. He immediately counter warts, uh, gets it out of the way. That means his Enchantress can actually rotate down into this area. And with half that XP, he's almost already level 2. And honestly, Pilot Die is just kind of he's right now because he he's not 100 percent sure where art style is he wasn't able to block out the camp but art style is actually just kind of foregone going to help his lanes and instead is focusing entirely on getting his own farm oh wow he's already stacked up in a wild wing to start things off great beginning but art style in the jungle already now poppy has hit level two he's got his scorched earth and the devourer of course picked up one of the centaurs and there's no real great setup here for that stun to come in so if he does want to roam onto a lane it's gonna be relatively difficult Maybe he'll just have to run someone down with the right-click attacks he does provide. A big old sword, and we're already seeing Art Style. He moves away from the Dire Jungle towards this off-lane camp. Probably pick up the big old Centaur, and now does he move down towards bottom lane? It's like he's going to. He's got two really strong creeps to be able to accomplish this, and most importantly, he's already level 3. And we haven't really seen this very much at the Major when Liquid played against uh, Secret, just because they didn't really have any jungle players but art style he's gonna get aggressive early here and general wants to make his way over but this is gonna get spotted and instead eternal envy is gonna get the attention as none of these attempts are actually gonna work out for them well they forced general back mid lane looks like puppy was actually swinging in angling onto dendy but can't really make that move and he's he swapped jungles the dire jungle doesn't feel safe with art style loitering around with intent looking for an opening for himself What's the plan here for Puppy? You know, they're saying. He just the... dive with the Scorched Earth and the right clicks. He's pinging already. He wanted We Ought to be ready for this, but We doesn't actually have the Gale up. But that's one of the strongest things about the Doom is if you can get the Pack Leader and you turn on Scorched Earth, it's incredibly hard for heroes to survive against. It's what we found when we were playing on the Chinese servers during our time in C, is that this has been a strategy in China for a really long time. Just, just grab punch. the Pack Leader, run at people with boots, and just keep hitting them. So far, all these lanes is just static farming. Everyone's doing very well. No one's really missing out on too much. No Drow Ranger, DP, Enchantress. Actually, 12 and 0. Already a great start, but a stun out from Pilot dies. Might be in a little bit of trouble, but it's actually Puppy who comes in with a first hit crit. And Misery TPs to help. There's a Sprout available. And uh, no Treants. No mana for it. Misses out on the Sprout as well. Art style. 
A hop, skip, and a jump away, but is it far enough? Puppy, still hot pursuit as Art Stars Enchanter is running low on mana, but still tangoing through and healing up. You notice what he's doing too? He's going the longest possible way because he wants them to think that there's a chance that oh, they the can block kill him. in with a ward. He cuts through the tree and we are he's there with the Gale and Art Style. I think this is the end, my friends. Blocked up again. First. These Plague Wards perfectly placed. Oh, nice. We are Venomancer. We'll get the first blood, but like you're saying, Blitz, the route he took. It secured his team a lot of farm and a lot of time was wasted there. If he could have survived there, that would have been the best possible solution just because I don't think he expected to die. And Eternal Envy at bottom, Radiant getting nuked quite heavily by this Seder Tormentor, aptly named as Eternal Envy. He's going to pop the salve. One more nuke is going to come out before it fades, but it's done its job, honestly. He doesn't have any more regen left to go. Pi is actually rotated in. This is a Navi that I haven't seen in a really long time, kind of just taking it too secret. That's what Kyo said that he wanted to see because Secret does tend to pick a little bit greedier than most teams. Well, they've drawn all attention away from that top lane. OD just farming away completely freely. Chira, already 25 last hits, got his treads. No, uh, no Bassy just yet, but I'm guessing that's coming up. Mm. Cilius over on the safe lane is pretty good for you. Mana regen gives you some good armor, base damage, and also allows you to shove the wave if the opportunity does arise. Yeah, he does have the catapult with him right now, and there is nobody in his off lane, so if oh, he chooses to, to. Dive a bottom lane, but Misery doesn't quite get there for the Sprout of General and our style poking in from the back end. Pile I die, he gets the hex down onto the enchantment with a stun as well. The they need a TP through. for this one. They've got the heal, and General uh, did your even comes in with the Astral. Oh, Misery they mess up a little bit. They've got the Fortune's End trapping him in, and the Astral will catch Eternal Envy. The right click attacks come through, and Navi, they find the Drow Ranger. You can hear the crowd already. It's been so long since Navi's been at a LAN. They're like, quite excited to see them in this one. The first LAN they've qualified for since end of 2015, kind of thing, or mid-2015. Mid it's been a long old time, Puppy. He's getting nuked down a fair amount. Earth Spike is out, but misses out onto Digira. The damage onto our style will be enough, and Secret gets something for their troubles. But you look at where Eternal Envy's standing from the right side of the trees, just throwing out these frost arrows. But Navi, they've got so many heroes down here. We are might get enclosed. The net is actually trapping him in, and Denny with the exit of Wehar. The Venomancer, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and Secret within their own jungle. Absolutely decimated. Yeah, and Misery is immediately going to TP to this top lane, try to take advantage of the fact that Navi has rotated so many heroes down there. Dendi pops the ultimate, but it was just to secure the kill on the Wii. Not going to pressure the tower off of that, especially not with the timer running out already. But Misery makes a really smart move just by forcing somebody back up here, which is what they want to be able to do just because Misery can TP back out and they can take an advantageous fight now. Well, the ghosts return, the sisters back to Dendi with the spirit life and their puppy. Oh, the denial of the DD rune. Dendi doesn't want to give it away to his brother. Puppy will wander himself away, but take a look again. Radiant Jungle Art Style, he's setting up his home and he has the best creep in the game. A Sato Banisher. Ah, Purge. He's actually going to start off with a troll trap on the pile. I die purged and slowed up. And this lion, not long for this world. If General wants to jump himself over, but Eternal Envy. Drow Ranger's here to kind of safeguard. This pile I die lion, even though he is dropping very low. What I like most about the strategy is most of the teams I felt never really put any pressure on Pi, and so what ends up happening is Pile I die eventually gets some uh, room to farm, and he kind of almost always pops out with something decent at around like the 15 minute mark, and he starts to pretty much just become like a one man terror show where. You know, he fingers plus the nature's profit ulti is usually enough to kill anybody, but this time around it's been slowed down. But General is getting really low here. Rewind. <laughs> he will get dropped. I mean, it kind of feels secret on the back foot a little bit, just trying to react to what Navi are doing, allowing them to overextend into their arms. And Puppy's Doom, he's about to hit level five, and he's got that buckler. Now, what is the idea behind Puppy's Buckler? Is it just that value item? I mean, it's really cost efficient. It helps out most of the issues that Doom has in the early game, which is primarily armor. Uh, it pairs really nicely with things like the Ring of Aquila to begin with, and it just kind of helps out your entire team for cheap armor. But if you look at Puppy with just Eternal Envy around, he's already got 14 armor, and that's before he pops the Buckler turn. Up to 16. Good stuff in this tier 1 tower. I mean, they've got no glyph, so they've got no way to save it. Well, I did try and look for Misery over towards this offlane camp, but Treant scouting out every step of the way and giving them that intel knowledge. 
Navi are nowhere near this bottom lane. You see the DP, you've seen the Oracle, and up at top, you've seen the OD and the Ench. So tier two, not quite easy pickings here with the Glyph actually being refreshed. Navi still trying to defend up with Dendi making the rotation down. Level eight, Death Prophet, regen rune and face boots up. What's the build for Dendi? Do you actually try to rush into the Yules or stop gap item like drums? I think the Yules is still a pretty good option to go for early on. I think he needs some way to just kind of collapse aside from just the void ulti. I was looking at the lineup and wondering a little bit for how they were going to gap close. And I think the most reliable way, obviously, is the Chronosphere, but if you can just get Dendi to become a solo kill terror, it's pretty good too. Like, if you can get on top of Eternal Envy, just swarm him with Ghost, lift him up in the air when he tries to TP, then immediately just, like, chase him down with Soul Siphon. Not a whole lot that he can do to survive, but right now, Seeker are just trying to build towards their timing. They're playing it pretty patiently right now. They're trying to get their Lion level 6. Misery still has a lot of room to grow too with the drums. And Puppy's made his way up here at top and they're gonna immediately start TPing people up here as Art Style is isolated way behind the towers. He's gonna try to drag attention once again, but... Oh, the attack's coming through slowly but surely, but they will finish him off. And uh, Navi, they took their foot off the pedal for even half a minute in secret. They react in strength and deny the tier one tower up at top. Now you're looking at this dude. Oh, this is a really good rotation though, down oh, at bottom. You're right, the Chrono wants Envy with the Exorcism and this kill will not only destroy Eternal Envy's early game farm, but also allow them to transition straight into the tier one down at bottom lane and bolster the gold that they're gaining. Yeah, that was a really good move by Navi. They trade their four position just for some information. They know that a lot of heroes from Secret rotate at top. They know there's no way to help out that, that safe laner anymore. And I think that was actually Eternal Envy's move maybe to just move back behind the tier one because he knows that the Radiant safe lane is so unsafe at this point in the game. And especially when you're a Drow, almost nobody's going to TP to come uh, just because you're going to die. It's only really the Lion that can come in. Even uh, Weeha coming in wouldn't make too much of a difference. They know that the Lion already TP top and Misery has no mana. And so it's almost an ideal circumstance for them to invade that safe lane. You've got some pretty good reactive heroes. I mean, Misery had no mana anyway. He's already been uh, been burning through it pretty quickly up there at top. But Puppy is closing in on that level 6. And once he's got that Doom, you, know, you can start to look for the OD, the Death Prophet, even just the Oracle, because you know, that false promise out from Oracle, coupled up with a Death Prophet or an OD, just keeping them alive and allowing them to pump out all that damage, it, it, it's annoying as all hell. Yeah, and that hero against the lineup that Secret has does really well. The Purge uh, can catch a lot of the neutrals that the Nature's Prophet can summon with the Treants, and even more importantly than that, the high burst damage against heroes like Lion and the Drow Ranger, it just works really effectively. Plus the False Promise, like you said, it works pretty good against the Doom if you can just keep spamming out healing. I think the Doom is still pure, so you can't use the the second ability. Uh, Fate Seating. Yeah, Fate Seating. Yeah, good point. Well, Navi are going to content themselves with a the tier 1 at bottom lane. I've also still got that ward up on the little ramp, watching for any movements across. But just take a look, secret lane ward. Still trying to scout out from laning phase where General is moving himself around to. But Navi have this OD. They've got the combo with the Chronosphere and Exorcism on top. If they do decide to start grouping up with the ultimates off cooldown, once they have these combos ready, Secret fighting into this, they like do they have a specific timing or specific item set they need to try and battle against it, or is it almost solely trying to bait out ultimates from Navi and then fight when they're on cooldown? I think you just play around the cooldowns, especially around the DP one. I think the OD one you can kind of work your way around, but Death Prophet one is quite strong against Secret's lineup, especially because they don't have the best way to concave fights out like they do, like Navi does with Chronosphere. So they're going to want the Death Prophet to be as little impact as possible. So if you're secret, it's not even about slow pushing. It's more about constantly re-maneuvering into different fight zones so that Navi is chasing you around and responding to what you're doing. And what that'll allow you to do is get Nature's Prophet a lot of farm so that he can pick up some items and start to become a threat. And he's actually got a lot of gold right now. And the way that he's playing is pretty much that. He's abusing the space that they're giving him for the free information. Like every time they go to gank, Misery says, okay, I'm gonna go to the top lane, take advantage of the fact that nobody's in this lane, pick up some farm. So is that gonna be a hand of Midas for Nature's Profit? He saved up about two grand. Uh, I think Drums is still really strong here, just because of the stats. It's almost, it's really hard actually to kill the Nature's Profit at that point, but it, it's tempting. Anytime I get 
around that amount of money, it always crosses your mind because you think to yourself, okay, this game, maybe it goes a little bit later. Will I regret not getting the Midas? Because with a hero like Nature's Prophet, you can make pretty decent use of it. The attack speed's pretty good on it, especially since you have the draw aura. It's an attractive option, but it just kind of depends on how they want to take the game. Like, if you anticipate the game going somewhat later, then you'll go for the Midas, but if you think that you can get into the early game fights and just outmaneuver Navi, then you can probably grab the drums. Yeah, something like face drums into Orchid wouldn't be too bad here. Like, uh, same kind of story with the Doom, you know, just locking down and limiting how much this Oracle can do with its saving capabilities is going to be absolutely great for you. Looking further forward into the game, you know, Navi, Dire Side, they've got great rush taking potential. Again, great team fight around it. Secret though. Definitely can sneak. If they get these tier 1s, tier 1 mid, and start, you know, corralling and herding Na'Vi back into their own jungle or even back into their own base with a couple of good team fights, there's nothing really stopping Secret from wandering into that rush pit. But we'll see Art Style hit level 6 and get himself a DD rune down at bot spot. And maybe he'll move himself into a spot where he can actually kill someone off. TP's coming up top. There was a stun onto Dichira, but Dendi again. He's been playing so act like proactively on this on this Death Prophet. He's yeah. not sitting back and farming. He's he's actually moving around the map. I think it's just Dendi's playstyle. Even when he plays farmers, is he's a little bit more predisposed to just running around the map, trying to create space for his team. But the good news is that he's getting things done. He's leading. Whenever he uses his ultimate, it's either led to a kill on a core hero, or it pushes into the tower. And most importantly, he's kept up in farm. Because that's always what you wonder about a DP when she decides to rotate around. You want to make sure that she's keeping up in net worth and it's just not artificially boosted from just the towers. Well, she's up at the top, looking pretty hot right now. Puppy, though, has got that Doom available. Trouble is Secret do not have any vision here on Na'Vi. You know, the one war they got out of the map, it looks like it's still down on the bottom lane. They cannot see a soul. So they'll group themselves up, not going to leave themselves susceptible to getting ganked or picked off. Well, Eternal Envy is the lone ranger down in bottom lane, heading into drums and Aquila. It's just going to be the stats game while we are. Hang on a second. Helm of Iron Will's picked up. Looks like it's going to be an early veil for him. I really like that pickup. I think it abuses pretty hard into the Venomancer ultimate and it makes it really hard for Navi to fight into that because then they have to burst down the Venomancer no matter what. Secret have ways to work around that as well but right now I think things are going okay for Navi. Like I think if you're a Navi fan you're somewhat okay with the pace of the game right now. They're winning in XP, Dendi's making good rotations in the game so far, Secret haven't really got that ball rolling yet on their strategy and things are fairly even for them right now. And what I normally look to is even less on the gold is just the XP lead that they've been able to build up. It means that their supports are doing quite well. Hello there, Senenko. Didn't expect this one. Doom Hex dead. Secret will snag themselves a kill. And again, they look for objectives. Nature's Prophet was already pushing the tier one up at top lane with the help of Treants and these Plague Wards. Secret will secure themselves that, but at what cost because uh, navi into the rush bit they go and this should be a relatively simple takedown you know there's no tier one bottom lane to tp2 secret could maybe maneuver themselves to the tier one mid but i think it's just gonna be the straight trade-off secret yeah. will push top shove it in try and chip away at tier two you know maybe do some severe structural damage but aegis will definitely go the way of navi yeah and this is the classic trade-off right that pretty much started happening around ci3 where bulldog would push in top and he would kind of just bait you. Either you're going to come fight us or we're going to go for the Roshan. And they don't even get the tier 2 out of that. So I think Navi's going to be incredibly satisfied that all it cost them was the tier 1 safe lane tower that would have gone down eventually. Just because that tower is really hard for them to defend anyways. It's not really worth what you get out of defending that tower. It's like you lose some control of your jungle, but it's on such a left hand side of the map that you can just place the ward like they did. And then you get a lot more control out of it. And they're smoked up. They want to go on Pilot Die. This should be a free kill. Yeah, Fortune's end. Earth Spike will land down at Snake But Dichira, he's looking and hunting for more. And Weeha has an Astral here from Dichira. Catches out the Venomancer. The rest of the team from Na'Vi's coming in thick and fast. And Weeha, I mean, you throw out your ultimate. But where's the rest of it? His teammates left him high and dry. Damage output. You know, it looks tasty. But without your Drow Ranger, without your Doom or your Nature's Prophet, there was just nothing doing there for Team Secret. And that's a significant cooldown used by Secret as well. That's a two minute ulti that they went into and Misery just continues to get farm, which I think is a really good bright spot right now for Nav uh, for Secret. And he's going to be a thorn in Navi's side for sure in a game like this. But uh, Navi, 
I'm still holding pace, and I think the reason why I'm so impressed by them, because honestly, I thought that Secret was going to take this game relatively easily, and I think a lot of people did. I think that was probably one of the more, you know, easy picks, I guess, of the tournament for most people, as they said, okay, Navi hasn't been in the line in a really long time. Secret just won a major. I don't even think that's uh, underestimating Navi. I just think yeah. that's how good Secret was. And when you look at the last couple of results Navi had, you know, losing to Empire in a best of one, Danish Bears took him out in a best of three, and game three of that was super convincing for Danish Bears. But Navi, they've turned up today. They've turned up to play against Team Secret, and so far, five to five, 15 minutes in, two heroes at the top of the net worth chart there, with General honestly not being too far behind. But it's Puppy's Doom, the four spot Doom. 1500 gold, and he's heading into that mech. You know, we've we've often seen him just keep the buckle and you know, naked as that value item, but he needs something to bolster his team here and keep them alive through all his damage from Navi, especially if that Chrono does land onto numerous people. But tier one, gonna get pressured out. They've still got the Aegis, of course, on Dichira. Drums popped out. Oh, General's looking for some kind of angle, and they're gonna get the ward down, but he's gonna get spotted. Really good timing by Wii. I'm kind of thinking about what kind of item build I'd go if I was the Void right now, just because there's two schools of thought, right? You can either go for the Blink Dagger here, or you can immediately go for the Aghanim Scepter. The benefit of the Aghanim Scepter is that the issue with Navi's lineup is that they're so timing oriented. And at some point in the game, Secret's going to start to abuse that. Because if they just lose one or two heroes against a Chrono, Navi no longer has any catch, and they can abuse that factor. But if he doesn't go for the Blink Dagger, that means the Chrono that we talked about, how crucial it is, you need the positioning for it at the same time. Like, Secret have ways to deal with you if you try to initiate from a long distance in Ward Vision. They've got the Gust, they've got the Lion Hex, they've got the Doom. All really good counters to it. My good way is countering out the Blink as well. Scorched Earth, Treants, the Plague Wards. There's so many ways that maybe General would need to reposition himself multiple times to try and get that Blink utilized correctly. Well, Eternal Envy, level 11 is up. There's the second point in his ultimate. And he's got his Morbid Mask, so kind of leaning the way of farming for the next 10 minutes. Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit less, but his team definitely have a lot of firepower behind them. His puppy. Is that, is that actually going to be a Vlad for Puppy and not the mech? Because he's saved up a hell of a lot of gold. Uh, I still think mech is an okay idea, but I'm pretty sure this is just the what Puppy was doing, which is the standard buckler into the Vlads. Because mm -hmm. Vlads works out really well for Doom, just because the one area of weakness for Doom is both mana regen and the fact that you don't have the best armor pool to work with, and it kind of shores up a lot of the weaknesses a secret to begin with. So I could see him just kind of going for like a mixed match of items. I know he was a really big fan of the Buckler at uh, at the Shanghai Major, and a lot of people said, well, why don't you upgrade it into anything? And I think his logic is just that it's really cost-efficient as an item, and it kind of gives Doom what he needs. Like, free armor helps out your team for the straight-up pushes. We saw how effective it was when they went for the Tier 1 bottom. Especially against the DP, with all that physical damage from Exorcism. So many of those ghosts flying around. Where are you heading to? Oh, D, D to your R. And Aegis is still up for a little while. He's got the Blink Dagger available in a couple of seconds. But again, Wee Heart is on the money with these Plague Wards. Placing them out, giving vision, and knowing exactly what Na'Vi are up to. But Eternal Envy doesn't know what ex exactly what they're up to because there's a couple of heroes actually plunging their way down. Oh, maybe he does. Maybe he does, realizing that there's only three spotted mid. And there's danger incoming. Great TP back towards his tier two. Yeah, he just game sense that really well. He knows that there's not a whole lot of protection there, and nobody from uh, Navi, aside from the two cores mid are showing, it's really easy for just art style plus general to be able to kill the Drill Ranger because of how weak she is, 1200 HP. And they're going to go for the mid tier 2 tower push. And I think this is the right idea, just because you want to be able to abuse your ultimate timings when you can, especially when you've got the OD that has an Aegis. But he's immediately going to TP top, go for Misery, who's now run out of mana. And this should be a free kill for him if he can find him. Phase boots, little jukes. There's a Sandy's Eclipse here if he really needs it. Does Ditty run know where he's gone? Oh my god. Oh Misery, no. have you really hidden Please yourself in the trees here? He gone. goes to the east, he goes to the west, he finds him. And Ditty run, not going to get fooled so easily by Misery. At the same time though, Misery got what he came for, which is that tier 2 tower at top, which is crucial for him to be able to push in. And uh, this is the item build actually that I was going to prescribe is just go for the drums and then go for the Midas back for it. You have the stats, you can help uh, beef yourself up a little bit more, keep yourself alive a little bit longer, deal a little bit more damage. But at the same time, they can kind of sense that they've lost a lot of the control that they might have had with the Doom early on. So you might as well take the game a little bit further. 
Will EE be able to game sense this one though? Art style general. They've got the chrono and the impetus damage as well. Art style. He's running low on mana and internal enemies actually tanking through this a fair amount with the gust back. He cannot TP away because of Art style's damage output, but the rest of his team impetus. Oh, he actually turns back to try and take the limited amount of damage, but the turnaround misery TPs in for the sprout oh, division. The They've got the doom onto general. One for one, not the exact result that Secret were looking for, but Navi, are you happy with that trade? Yeah, because you just got four heroes to show on the map at bottom two. And if Artstyle doesn't die here, that would be pretty bad to happen as Pylite die doesn't get the stun off. The Purge already comes out and Ooh, three here comes silence. Dendi. A Yule Scepter up and the Spirit Siphon back onto two. Weeha and Pylite die both caught up with a big ultimate from Weeha back onto three with the Finger of Death on Dendi's Dendi. Dendi real low. He's draining the HP back from Poppy, but it's not enough. With Dipjira blinking aggressively forward, the Astral to try and save his teammates, the Courier just like wandering around looking for looking for his master, but Dendi is dead. And even with Pilot Dice missed on to lead that fight, Navi, they couldn't really do anything just because they had to use the False Promise onto the Enchantress, which is not the target. I almost feel like he should have just held it, because Dendi was much more worth it for them. And they're gonna try to use the fortunes and on the creeps if there's simply too many and that's gonna be a free push for secret and what could have just been a one for one and maybe even better for navi ends up costing them their tier two at bottom definitely not worth it positionally and misery's doing a great job you know as soon as that fight's over take the tier two straight back up the to top farm enemy jungle maybe push out with the treants once he summons them across as well but general i think you're right man he's uh Saving up a lot of money here. Going for that Blink Dagger. That's going to be what he aims towards while our stars Dragonlance. And now with another Ogre Club. Aghanim Scepter. This Enchantress is going to do a hell of a lot of damage, but it's Misery that's actually scouted out, and he turns back greedily trying to farm, but the vision from the Sprout not going to be good enough. Arstar just needs to get into range, and when the Dragonlance available, he'll be in the perfect prime position. Again, to kill off Misery. Yeah, and they've done a really good job at delaying and fighting around General's ultimates and not having to waste uh, the DP ghosts early on. And that's a really good positive sign for them, but at the end of the day, they want to get a little bit more aggressive than they have so far, and uh, losing Dendi at bottom definitely kind of slowed down their timings. And Secret are taking full advantage of that. Envy's just power farming as much as he possibly can, playing pretty greedy. Uh, Weeha's doing the same thing in the jungle, Puppy's in a similar position, everyone's just kind of farming as much as they possibly can before the next engagement. Yeah, you kind of know that next Roshan is going to be the next big fight, at least Na'Vi. I'm going to try and scout out Seneko. Secret, no, it's not up yet, but 30 seconds until the big man returns, and Oracle, sit yourself in there. Nope, go back, go on, go back in there, just sit around and wait, see what happens. Well, Misery, where's he at? He had a train in there not too long ago, but he's not going to... I'm going to spend his time re-scouting out the Roche Pit. Navi, they're desperate. They really want this Roche, and they've already got High Ground Ward watching for the advance. And Team Secret, if they do come down this ramp, while well, every single member of Navi is over in this third of the map. While, well, again, Misery top. Turn Lenvi, three-man farming the jungle. They're just trying to gain value while they know... You, know, you kind of know that Navi's over there, right? Just waiting for it. And we now has the Aghanim Scepter, which is going to make these fights around that tight area really brutal. Especially if he can get it off. And General's going to spot that the Roshan is up. Navi. They really want this to be able to down some of the key tier 2 towers. Like, I think the bottom one this is risky, though. Wildwing Ripper is out from Enchantress and Puppy. He's been revealed, but there's a They're Sato smoked up. Vanisher they there. really have to be careful. We hustled. And the purge is coming through. Our style is slowed down. Puppy still looking for a target to doom up the gust onto Dijiral. No orbs for him, but the jump forward. Oh, that general. Pro. Eternal enemy. A wee the finger of death back onto the little froggy, but Eternal enemy's trapped. The impetus damage up to the high ground as Dendi chases him down. Spirit siphon forward and actual fortunes ended through, but Envy's dead. And there's Dijiral OD kept alive. Misery on the retreat away. Secret. Oh my god. Puppy is trapped. He's stuck up on this ramp, but they did kill off the OD. At the very least, we are holding the high ground position, the damage over time. Oh, that's going to be Blitz. maybe another hero down too as Misery goes for the TP. Nabs him as well and Puppy just marching through. Weeha eventually gets there, lays down the poison. Nobody can breathe that air. Is... That poison Nova. Yeah, that actually just completely turned the fight for them. Navi felt like they had that one for a second. The OD didn't hold up though in the false promise and... Even with that Chronosphere, they just could not capitalize. Puppy did such a good job of not getting doomed. 
that he was able to find the outside edge, get the Doom off onto the OD, mitigate a lot of the damage during the Chrono. And that was what won them the fight. I mean, Digira had BKB, he had the False Promise, everything was thrown onto the OD, but you're right, the Doom just meant there's no Arcane Orb, there's no Eclipse, there's nothing. After the initiation, after that sort of burst of cooldowns that Na'Vi used, Exorcism and Chrono, both onto good targets, well-timed, well-placed. But my goodness, we are now level 14, that Poison Nova with the Veil and the Gale. I underestimated it, I think Na'Vi underestimated it, but you can't do that. Eternal Envy, at this point, it feels like he's, you know, not necessarily a throwaway hero, but they don't mind too much if he dies, because they pile on so many cooldowns. Waste a lot of time just killing off the poor little Drow Ranger. Yeah, it actually takes so much for Navi just to kill anybody. Again, it's just, they have a lack of hard disables. It almost always comes down to just the fact that the Chrono Sphere has to hit multiple targets, and even then, if Puppy does what he did in the last fight, positions himself around the Chrono, gets a Doom off on the OD, that's a large chunk of your damage gone. And a lot of teams would actually focus down Dendi first, try to get rid of the DP ulti, but it almost feels like Secret are content at fighting around that. They just do not want this OD to get big in fights. Na'Vi may be feeling a little bit desperate. They've got the majority of their cooldowns back. And I think if they do take a team fight, ex yeah, Exorcism is back in five seconds. They've got everything. Their full arsenal returns to them. In secret, Pylai Dai. You were talking about, you know, his pretty decent item timings recently, even with this five roll lion. He's got Weeha's bottle, 1500 gold, 700 off that blink dagger. Once he has that, he can be the tool that they use to actually jump in, initiate onto Dendi, and maybe even you know, cause him a few issues and struggles in these team fights that start kicking off. Poppy, high ground observer ward, he's acting as one at least, and he'll scout out the smoke, blink himself back. Oh, look at that timing. General nearly catches him, but as he yours up to the end, Poppy silenced, now trapped and stuck. The high ground was his friend, but no longer. And that's Dendi. A that is such a huge pickoff for Navi because they needed the Doom out of the way. I feel like of all the heroes right now, in order it goes, the Venomancer would be your first target if you can get him before his ultimate comes off. But that's hard, right? Because you would need to get the Yule Silence off on him before he could get his ulti. And then it's the Doom immediately after that because you need your OD to start hitting hard in fights. There's so much of the net worth in this game, second uh, in the game total, just behind the Nature's Prophet. But it doesn't really mean much when he immediately gets doomed in every single fight. You're essentially just flushing 11k net worth down the drain every time uh, Puppy remains in the fight. Well, Aghanim Scepter for the Nature's Prophet, and it's oh, gonna... This is such a nice setup from General. Oh, who's he found? Wait. Oh, they're this... not going for it. I thought this was gonna be a free kill. Apparently not. General is a little bit timid about his movements and doesn't want to blink down to the low ground. Maybe they just want to kill, uh, you know, Puppy again. Look for the Doom for a second time in a row, but instead, General... I mean, we, we've had Puppy act as an observer board. General's got a better position. He's blinked himself up on top of that spire, and he's going to see Misery move across. What's the goal here? Because the rest of his team has kind of left him high and dry, and we are... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No stuns, but they saw him. Saw him TP away. Yeah, I guess it was because Misery had the Aegis that they didn't feel comfortable going for it, but maybe if the Aegis was going to last for a little bit longer, like if it was in its infancy, but it's already just a minute and a half left to go. They can wait that one out before they engage the next fight. But it's really important that in this next fight it goes well. And that goes without saying, just because your OD eventually... He's gone to a lot of these team fights. He's going to start to fall behind in net worth to the Nature's Prophet, who can always push out side lanes, especially with the Aghanim Scepter. You don't want him to pick up something eventually, like a Hex, as the game goes later and later and your BKB charges start to run out. You've got to wake up earlier than that, Na'Vi, to count to turn Lenvi off guard. Again! Drawing multiple heroes down to that bottom lane while he's farming and gets himself away scot-free. You know, they're pushing top, drawing people across the map and forcing Na'Vi into these positions where you know, they're thinking about using their ultimates, thinking about battling and skirmishing, but they just never get the perfect opportunity unless, you know, it, all these fights Secret have presented to Oh, Na'Vi. DR Rogers blinks down. Oh, man, the doom and the finger of death. I will say that he didn't expect that. He's like, free Trian? No. Not happening in misery. He's actually spotted Dendi. Sprout does not cancel out the TP, of course, so away he goes. This might actually mean a high ground attempt, though, from Secret. They do it so quickly with the draw aura. 
And there is no glyph available for Navi. If they they can't fight this either. They don't have the OD buyback. Either. Oh, you're right. There's no buyback yeah. on him and no gold for it either. This could just be a tier three straight up. Maybe even maybe even look for racks because then you're sure you've got the Octarine core and a DD rune, but you're gonna have to pop your ghosts sooner rather than later. Top lane is getting pushed in as well as Arstar dropping incredibly low, but Poppy he's gonna get right clicked out by the Enchantress. Aegis is gone and Dendi on the front lines. He is trying to force them back with the false promise there. The blink forward and he oh, catches so four many of them. Heroes. The poison nobles start taking them over and Puppy just battles through in the cage of trees. The nade got gone and dead and down he goes. In general, he's got the chrono, but he's caught Dendi in it as well. Oh, so just much, allowing them to right click and pummel into him. Five dead. Navi buyback central. You bring back the DP, bring back the faces void. OD respawns for 16 to 12. Secret get the first racks of the game. That Veil ultimate from Weeha is just doing way too much damage. Navi's not even sure what to do in that situation. Fortunately for them, with the Octarine Core, Dendi was able to heal up so much in that false promise, but it doesn't really matter when you're the only person left on your team alive. And Secret, ultimately, they get what they came for, which is at least one of the racks. Obviously, you'd be much more satisfied with the melee, but opening up that lane, having it constantly push in on top of the fact that you've got the Nature's Prophet, they're going to be really happy with that. And I don't know, Diyara looks like he's going to go for the Hyperstone, uh, pick up the Moon Shards for himself, but I almost feel like somebody on this team has to get Lincolns at this point. I really like this Observer Ward from Secret as well. So one up above the tier three at top lane. Just gives them a nice amount of high ground vision, even if they don't have anyone up there. Going to be able to scout out, you know, if they shove mid again, they've got the opportunity for maybe Misery to TP up and know exactly what he's dealing with around that area. I mean, they know where Navi is at all times now, because they've got all but one exit covered on the map right now. And if nobody pushes in bottom and nobody walks by the one at the top, either A, they're smoked up, or B, they're pushing in bottom, and then you can just play the process of elimination game. And unlucky for them, they're all in the ward vision right now. Their sentry just misses out. I'm probably waiting for the Aghanims on the Enchantress, but I'm not sure how much that even affects his Navi. They're grouped up heavily as Puppy's gonna pick up the Arcane Rune. Well, I mean, gotta that's be an careful. illusion, did you? Oh no, the Gale lands Not with BKB as well, but as the false promise, the Doom and Hex onto Dichira. He's getting burnt out in the blink forward. The TP forward, Misery is on the back lines, looking for the finger of death, is burnt out and down he goes. Popped into oblivion, it's a good chrono though, General. He's caught two, Misery dropping low, Exism goes still going away, Dendi's damaging everyone down, a pilot die. There's the impetus out from our style, a double kill for Dendi. And maybe this is a fight the Na'vi were looking for. Weeha. Oh, he's got his ulti. He's got a poison nova back onto the two of them. Dendi and General dropping low. They've got him out. And a triple oh, kill for Dendi. The but he's dying to the ghost. Let's look at him. Ultra kill for Dendi. They just walk straight on in. It doesn't matter though. This should mean a Rax. They're going to take this really quickly. Dendi's got to make his way slowly up there as Misery and Eternal Envy. Just completely avoiding the fight, realizing this is a free Rax opportunity. Envy's gonna get out, Misery blinks out at the last second. Oh, That's a free melee Rax for them. A buyback from Misery does lead to another Rax up at top. Now, even with an ultra kill for Dendi, it, it kind of felt, again, Secret are giving things away to Na'Vi, but for every gift they give, they take something away. Dendi had like flashback moments when his TP got canceled as he was getting Rax. <laughs> oh no. It was like, Puppy, you remember that one? <laughs> Not like that. But at oh. bottom, Sonego's just trying to push out the lanes, and this is what you have to do against a Nature's Prophet. You notice that the Secret, they don't want to leave things to chance right now. They can win team fights with the help of Weehaw's ultimate, but the DP ult is still incredibly strong. Uh, Misery still uses ultimate as well. Or his buyback, anyways. And team fight potential wise, Secret, they don't want to leave things to chance. They're just going to continue to go for the push out, force Navi to make a move, and maybe overextend into their hands. Well, there's your completion of the buckler. Crimson Guard for Puppy. Again, good item up against that exorcism from the Death Prophet, Roshan, up in five. And Navi, they do have actual ward coverage around the Roshan pit, so they'll be able to scout things out. But you just know if they dip into that pit, there's going to be a Nexus Prophet on you know, multiple lanes, just pushing in with Treants, the Aghanims upgrade. Look at them. They're already onto the range tracks. There's no one here to defend it. They actually have to send somebody up here. This is not it's too late. a free Rax for them. As... Yeah, Navi. this is just going to be taken for free as Navi. They're trying to make their move for the Roshan pit, but Misery might just see this and say to himself, I can go for the mid one as well. 
This clearly means that Navi is not inside their base right now. So everybody's pinging around the map area, and this is just information, even though you don't see it with your own eyes, you can kind of just infer. As now they're going to see Ditya Ra. Snake is going to deward that, but they've got to go back. And this is just going to be a positional game as once Misery sends these treants in, Navi, they've got to make a decision. Are you going to fight for the road? Ooh. He had the vision for a split second, but couldn't turn fast enough with the hex. So like you said, as soon as they draw people back, suck them in. I'll go into the Rook's Pit of their own accord. Eternal Envy, Misery, we are all in the pit. Now this does I like Dai goes down so fast. Leave them open to a Krona from General, so secret they will try and bail themselves out of that big AoE, the choke point, but a Doom on the General. Puppy chose his target and chose as well, and we are for the shred him with the poison damage, even with the full spell out. Puppy on the run, retreating away from the Exorcist, but the we are, there's the poison Nova, back onto three. Eternal Lemmy with go down. gets the Aegis of the Immortal. Onto the Nature's Prophet. And they've actually forced out Dendi's exorcism and might look to fight with a finger of death. They definitely will. Dendi! Highlight die. Perfect place and perfect time. Even after the quick death he suffered. Comes back in. And there's no buyback on any of these cores. Even the Enchantress. It's just going to be the OD and the Oracle holding against pretty much everybody but the Venomancer, but when it comes to the straight push, it's Misery that you've got to worry about. He's got the Aegis, though. Killing him twice is going to be a tall feat. Is They're going to go for the split push. Is Eternal Envy, they're going to force them to make the decision. Are you going to defend this bottom one, or are you just going to leave this mid one for oh, free? Oh, the Oh, the Clever Cape keeps him alive. There's no reveal. To yeah, Misery go. doesn't even care about heroes. He's just going straight for the building. Right, click the building. Structural damage is good. And the blink forward again. Did you are caught? They're going to try and save him. Suneko, though, look at that damage output. And it's all over. Navi tap out against Team Secret in game number one. It looked even. It looked good for Navi for, what, the first 15 minutes. But that initial fight, as soon as Venomancer got his Aghanim Scepter, it looked rough. Yeah, the biggest thing is the Secret were always outmaneuvering Navi around the map. They were forcing them into awkward situations. They would push them 